Today I'm on the Columbia River uh, just south of Wenatchee and the reason I'm out here floating around today is I'm with Bill Lemke who some of you may know as the tackle buyer at Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee and I have got the new Loranch HDS 7 unit on my new Kingfisher boat. Bill Lemke also just acquired the same unit. Bill is a bass fishing fanatic and is really excited about the different functions of this unit. And Bill's agreed to walk me through the process of setting it up. And we're starting right on the main menu page of this and Bill's going to explain how it works. First of all, I want to talk about just the basic differences between the new Lowrance HDS 7 Touch unit compared to some of the other units that are out there that Lowrance has had for a long time. The structure scan has been around, out for quite a few years, but in the past you've always had to buy it as an accessory to hook up to the unit, which is about a $600 package. And with that package you get the structure scan transducer and the module that runs it. But the module that runs it you need to mount somewhere else in your boat, drill holes in it, mount it in your boat, and then run the wires up to the actual unit. Well, you don't need to do that anymore with the new touch units because the structure scan module is built into the actual unit now. So all you have to do is hook up your new structure scan transducer, plug it into the back, and you've got all that information is already built into the, this one unit. And that's what really sold me on this. One, it's probably the easiest unit to use on the market, plus it's very compact, and it's, like I said, it's easy to do, just as easy as all these new touch phones out there and everything. When you first turn the unit on, you get five different options out here. You got your chart plotter, your sonar, your structure scan, your steering, which is a navigational page, and info, which you can hook sensors up to your outboard motor and uh, see what's going on under the hood from your Lowrance unit here. But today we're going to focus on the top three units and what everybody else is very familiar with is the sonar. And to get the sonar you just tap on it like that and your sonar comes up. Now your menu page is on the side right here and you've got a lot of different options. Your frequency mode and advanced unit. You can tell how easy it is for me to look at these different things. I could adjust my sensitivity just by sliding it up or down or just leave it in auto mode. I can pop back and change my color line and the view of it. And But uh, that's how easy it is and a lot of people they're happy with the normal sonar unit and if you're going to leave it on that way you can just grab the screen and slide it off and bam you've gone to a, a full picture on there and don't have to look at that menu. Now if you decide you want to go back to that menu just tap on again and it pops up on you. It's that simple. Now let's go back to the main page. One of the things I use a lot is the GPS aspect of these units. I can just click on my chart plotter right there and it'll bring up uh, our location out here on the river and let's zoom out a little bit to see exactly where we are. Okay. Oops. You were still dialed in on Lake Chelan, I can tell. Yes. <laughs> it was pretty obvious, those trolling patterns. <laughs> I should go back there and we can see where all those hot spots are where we're skokin' fishing. <laughs> okay, now what I'm gonna do now is just zoom in on this, and I can do it two ways. I can either hold, it, hold the zoom button right here, or I can use the manual buttons up here. One of the things I like about this, it's all done with a touch of my finger. We have just a couple simple buttons on the side here. Our pages button, a zoom in and out, and a waypoint button along with the basic on off button. Now here we are out in the Columbia and uh, so we can set a, the easiest way to set a waypoint is we can just hit the waypoint button right there and uh, number 005 comes up. Well that's such a, a generic type lettering on a waypoint. So I can tap on 005 and here's my location. I can edit this uh, waypoint location. Now all I have to do is tap on this screen up here like so and I get a full keyboard that pops up. That's the neat thing about this. You don't have to sit there and hold a button down like the old texting of the cell phones. You can just type in 
First we'll clear out 005, put in Dave. We can hit a space in there. Secret spot is number five. And then we can hit enter. Now what's unique about this is the f this is brand new on the GPS units. It gives you an area for notes. So what that is, you can click on there and you can type in a paragraph of information about that particular waypoint. Tell them what fish you've caught or what's unique about it, but you can just type in a full paragraph and have that in there as a description of that waypoint. So that's a neat feature that they offer. Also the icons, you can click on there, you can have them hidden or exposed, you can change the, you can put a rock pile on there or do whatever you would like. Um, that's the neat thing. It's so easy to customize these. See if that oh was a goodness. if that was a secret rock pile or you know whatever you had anchored there and made a waypoint. Just click on any one of these waypoints. Say there was a big fish there. You can use the fish as your symbol, and then all you have to hit is close or save, and now we have Dave number five with a fish symbol on the screen. Boating is something the whole family can enjoy, and it's surprising how affordable a new boat can be from Bob File Boats and Motors. Stop in today and take a look at the largest selection of boats in North Central Washington, including top names, Bayliner and Tahoe. Bob File Boats and Motors can help you find that boat that fits your needs. And whether it's for fishing or just a ride on the water, you can be sure your new boat will provide hours of fun for years to come. Visit the boating experts today. Bob File Boats and Motors on the Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee, the place to buy a boat. No one is happy about having to repair a vehicle after an accident. However, I was very happy when I chose First Choice Collision Center when I needed this service. I can't say enough about how they treated me. Fast and friendly just doesn't say enough. They have amazing technology to make a damaged vehicle look like new. At First Choice Collision Center, you can expect modern service with old-fashioned values. That was my experience, and I'm sure it will be yours too. No matter where anglers are heading, whether it's Banks Lake, Lake Roosevelt, or Rufus Woods Reservoir, they all make the same stop. That's at Big Wally's in Cooley City. Here they find everything they need for a successful day on the water. Fuel, ice, a tackle shop, and people who know what they're selling behind the counter. State and tribal licenses, even a hot breakfast or lunch. When you're on the go, don't forget to stop at Big Wally's and visit their website at BigWallysFishing.com. Hook on to Hordes of anglers head for our area lakes as they open to fishing in the spring, but before they head for their favorite lake, they stop at Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee. Hooked on Toys is the biggest tackle store in eastern Washington, and they have everything an angler could need for a successful day on the water. You'll find the biggest selection at the best prices for all your angling needs. Located at 1444 North Wenatchee Avenue or online at HookedOnToys.com. Hooked on Toys! Now, let's say that Dave had drifted a ways downstream and uh, he wanted to move his waypoint upstream. So what he could do is he could go in here and tap on his waypoint. Let me see if I get the right menu here. And we can hit move and we can actually move that waypoint Oops, I'm moving the screen. We can move that waypoint over here. Hit and see. Boom, we just moved that waypoint to our new location up there. That's how easy. Now, if I wanted to put it right on top of the boat, I can go there, but I missed the boat. So, and this is what I think is really phenomenal. You can hold on that, put your finger down, and what happens 
is you get a scope with crosshairs and you can just roll your finger on the screen and put it right on target and let go and pinpoint your your waypoint on your target. That is the really neat thing about this. Before we've always tried to move crosshairs up and down. Now we just tap on a screen, we get the scope with the crosshairs and we can just roll our finger and pinpoint it onto the exact spot where we want to set that waypoint. Okay. <clears throat> Another great thing about this touch screen, I'm going to zoom out here, and if we want to move the map around or look something, we can just grab the screen, oops, clear cruiser, we can just, gr oops, let me back out a little bit here, Let's say we wanted to go up towards uh, Wenatchee a little further, we're down here in the area of East Wenatchee, tap on the screen there, hit zoom, it centers it up that quickly. I want to move up a little further, hit zoom, it keeps re-centering re uh, the map on the screen itself. That's the neat thing about these touch screens. Now, if I zoom out a ways, and let's say I wanted to go back up to Lake Chelan and see where Dave's secret spot was, I can just grab onto the screen and slide it up to Lake Chelan, put my arrow right there over Dave's waypoint, or get it close up. I can hold down and put my little crosshairs and roll it right up on his waypoint, start zooming in. Now, how easy is that to move it around on the screen? We're going to zoom in here, and there we have all of Dave's uh, breadcrumb trails from when he's up fishing for kokanee. That's a neat thing. You move the screen around with your finger, and it sure is a lot easier than go moving the, the old days of moving across here up and down. If I want to see exactly where his waypoint is, I can tap on that waypoint, and there's his lat long and, and all his information about where he was. Incredible. Now, as far as viewing this information, we're going to go back to the main menu page, and on the right hand side, it gives you several options. The first one here, he has his GPS on the left side and the sonar on the right side. We have several other options on here. Um, we have structure scan, which I haven't gone into yet, but that is. Uh, looking like a down imaging of the bottom or side imaging and currently I'm bringing up the down imaging view what it looks like on the Columbia here and now we are sitting in about 40 feet of water and we can really zoom in on that if we want or we can back out and uh, look at a much broader picture we also have, we can look at things out to the left side of the boat, or we can look at things out to the right side of the boat. This really gives you the opportunity of seeing trees and rock piles that are out to the side of your boat. Now, to give you an idea of how far we're looking, um, in 30 feet of water, it will look approximately 75 feet out to each side of the boat. So in 30 feet of water, we are looking at about a, 150 foot path going down the lake which is really nice if you're trying to find an isolated rock pile because in 30 feet of water if you're in nor have a normal in normal sonar mode your sonar cone is only looking at about a 7 to 10 foot circle on the bottom so by having side imaging on there it really gives you the ability to look at a much broader area to find what you're looking for, whether it be rocks or trees or any other type of structure down there. I'm going to go back to this main menu and show you one of what I think is a, a fantastic feature of the new Laranche touchscreen, and that is over here you have all these preset windows of how you want to look at your screen, whether you want side imaging up here, down imaging, or your sonar. If I go back there, I can come over here and what we have is a couple blank screens. And so I can tap on that and now what I can do is make my own screen. Let's say I want to look at 
the fish finder, the sonar, I put that in right there. And I also want to look at structure scan. I can grab that, put it over here with my finger, and it's going to go off to the side. Um, actually, I think I want sonar on top of that, so I can come up here and I can change that. And now I'm going to put my chart plotter on there. So I grab that, I move it and it ended up in the wrong spot but i'm going to put that over there and get it the way i want now i can either save this or i can clear it out but i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna save it boom and now that configuration is permanently in my menu here and down here it says more and if i wanted to i can click on that and see we have approximately seven or eight more windows that we can customize and make and save in our unit and that's the really neat feature about this you customize your unit to what you like you don't have to take the factory settings you can make your own windows up here and set up your picture however you would like it your town ford is kicking off the season with the best deals of the year it's the built for tough truck event Great power and amazing fuel economy means no compromises. And that's what you get in a truck built Ford Tough, like the Ford F-150, with a powerful and efficient EcoBoost engine. The power you want and the economy you need. Or Ford Super Duty, with its amazing 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel. If you're looking for power, payload, towing, economy, your town Ford's got the truck for you. Head to your town Ford in East Wenatchee. The goal of Battery Systems is to provide the best products combined with the most efficient service at competitive prices. I've found their people live up to this, so don't buy anything without talking to them. You should make their batteries and accessories your choice to power your vehicles and boats. This is Dave Grable, and I choose Battery Systems to keep me running on shore and on the water. To find a Battery Systems product expert in a location near you, log on to BatterySystems.net. When you're fishing in Banks Lake, Lake Roosevelt, even Rufus Woods, the place to stay is at Cooley Playland in Electric City. They have camping and RV hookups right on the water. There's a launch with fuel and one of the best tackle shops in the area. You can get your state and tribal fishing licenses right there. Cooley Playland has been the friendly place to stay for fishermen for decades, and if you haven't camped there yet, you'll learn why. Call for reservations at 509-633-2657. Be sure to visit their website at cooleyplayland.com. The Evan Root E-Tech. It's a dream come true. For E-Tech engine sales and service and repair of all boats and motors, call Lyle's Boats and Motors in Kashmir, 663-5191. And one other thing I wanted to, I should go back to, if I'm looking at a menu right here, and you may not be able to see it on this camera, but this is highlighted in red on the outside here. And what tell, that tells me is that these options over here or adjustments apply to this window. Now if I come over here and tap on that screen, the this, this screen gets highlighted in red and now all of this, these options over here apply to just that window. So that's how I can go in and adjust each one even though they're both on the screen at the same time. If I like everything and I don't want to look at my other options, I can grab that and slide it off to the side and get my full picture. That's the really neat thing about the touch screens. If I want to go back to the window, I just tap on menu and all that stuff comes right back up. Right now I'm looking at uh, a side imaging left and right. I can come in here and look at the view and I can go strictly to a down scan imaging and there we actually see some fish on there cruising around. There's one at five feet, another one down at 15, and they actually look a little bit different. They light up in white when you've got it on down imaging. Um, so that's just kind of the neat features of the uh, Lowrance Touch Unit. It's very easy, very user friendly to use. Um, let's go back in here. We can also change our color palettes. I like to use structure scan a lot. Um, Go back in here, view my palette. I can change the color. I can go to a green background. I can go to a, a bluish 
back, oops, let me just slide the menu up here. A blue background, which I really like for my personal use, but you've got about nine different settings here which you can uh, change your color background on this unit. It's real easy to do, hit back, and just grab it when you're done and slide it off to the side to get your full picture. So that's some of the really basic features that I use on this unit. And uh, now with that blue too, now any kind of bottom structure like a, a log or a tree is gonna show up in white. Right, that's and, correct. And, or a fish. Even. Correct. It's going to be, I can see why you like that. It's a good contrast color mm -hmm. and it's real obvious what you're looking at. Yeah, and like I said, what's neat is you can customize just about every aspect of this unit right down to the color very easily with a touch of a button. You can go to red or whatever you color, green, or it's it's just so easy. And then just, it, everything's touch of a button. And then you can, if you're done with it, just slide it, oops. Go back, slide it off the side, and you got your full picture. Yeah. Well, you know, Bill, I was scared to death of this unit because I thought it was going to be so complicated I'd never be able to navigate through it, and I'd wind up using just one or two features. What you've shown me is that it's very simple, actually, mm -hmm. to move through this unit just using the menu page. It's already got pre-formatted you yep. know, uh, screens, and then you can customize it, as you showed, just with the touch of your finger. It's You've walked through all the basic elements in just a few minutes. Exactly. That's what I like. It was very user-friendly with the touch screen. I can go right back in, look at my sonar, hit the menu. You know, there's I can go out of auto to manual screen or whatever you want. You can zoom in. And there's also another thing I want to show you on here, which I found very interesting, is that this has a feature called trackback, which let's say we went over a rock pile about 10 minutes ago. I can actually grab this screen and slide it back and go back into history and see where that rock pile was. And now let's say, let's just say for instance, there was a tree right here and I wanted to go back to that tree. I can tap on that screen, hit waypoint, and uh, let's say I'm gonna put uh, an X there. And now I've set a waypoint on something that I went over 10 minutes ago. And now all I have to do is go into my, my, my GPS page, hit go to, and go right back to that, that page. I just hit a button, now I'm up to current information. So you can actually go back in history just by grabbing the screen and set waypoints wherever you would like. Isn't that neat? That's so amazing. often we go over a tree or a rock pile and we've drifted off, it's totally off the screen and instead of trying to drive back there, we can just grab the screen, pull it back, go and set a waypoint on there, hit the waypoint button, give it a symbol, and go right back to there. Just hit our, we'll hit our navigational page. Um, we'll clear that. And then your tracking line, you just follow your tracking line right back to it. You can follow your tracking line or you can hit a go to and, and go straight back to it. Now I'm gonna zoom in here. And here's some of those other waypoints that we just set right yeah, there. Yeah. If I zoom in even further, you can see I set waypoint five and waypoint six off that menu there. And that's how easy and user friendly this unit is. Tremendous. Well, I think even uh, someone that is electronically challenged as I am and I'm gonna have a lot of fun and the applications, the side scan, the structure scan, these are both aspects that I've never had available to me and they can be accessed so easily through this unit. Boy, I can't wait to try that. Now we're gonna put around out here for a little bit because one of the things I found out here just by putting around in so many instances on sonar, you'll find something that looks like a bush down there 
and uh, if you run over it with like down imaging, I saw some what were actually either pipes or laying down logs on the bottom of the river out here, which on regular sonar just kind of shows up as a bush. And some of the bushes I found out here in the river, you can actually see the different limbs and everything on them much clearer than uh, what you get with normal sonar. Oh it's yeah. It's just quite incredible. And you've got two different transducers looking down in the water. You're looking different directions, so you really get a lot of information with this new unit if you run the structure scan. Well, let's do that then. Uh, I'm going to shut the camera down. We're going to run up and find something on the bottom here and then show you the kind of detail you can expect by using that structure scan. Hi! You are not going to believe this. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the new cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste. 60% less sugar? Mmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Let me get the camera. I've never had anything like it. Oh, my parents are going to fly. Yeah, they're going to be so proud. Introducing Pepsi Next. Drink it to believe it. Are you getting this, honey? It's going viral. This is Dave Grayville, the fish and magician, and when I fish the Upper Columbia and the Mad Howe Rivers for steelhead, I stay at the Lake Pateras Inn. I can tie my boat right up out front and be minutes from the action. The famous Miller Hole on the Mad Howe is less than two miles away. The rooms are comfortable and surprisingly affordable, and I'll be making the Lake Pateras Inn my base camp. To learn how to book your room at the Lake Pateras Inn, log on to lakepaterasmotorinn.com or call 866-444-1985. Go right over here. It should be right in here. Boy, we just went over a tree a minute ago. It submerged uh, probably about 20 feet down. And the difference on that structure scan was so dramatic. It was just like taking a picture. It looked like we could almost see the leaves on the tree that was down there rather than the two-dimensional screen that our sonar gives us. We can run over that again. here here we have a tree down here here's a very nice clear image of what the tree looks like here it's just your typical sonar it's a little bit tough to see on there but here the tree we can clearly see the main trunk with a couple limbs off to the side that's how much clear structure scan is oh yeah the details amazing here is these pilings from the pier that we're up against each piling coming down there, we can see where the footing comes right down to the bottom. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And now this little gray line, this little white line that's showing up here, there's a cable that runs underneath there, and that's what that is underneath the dock. But we see each one of the, the, the pilings that come down off this dock that we're going alongside out here. We can see, yeah, we're probably 10 yards off of that. And all those pilings are showing up on here as we go past them. Yep. And it's a very clean bottom down there. We don't see any boulders down there on the bottom, out to the left or to the right. We're going to go back to that split screen page. That easy. What I did was I've got my down scan imaging, and we can here we can clearly see the rocks on the bottom with a two power zoom. This is what it looks like on our traditional sonar at two power zoom. You can actually see the boulder sitting on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> and if we wanted to blow it up even more, we could go to a four power zoom. We could just keep zooming in 
and looking at what's on the bottom down there. Just like 3D. That's true. That gives you that little square that highlights it so it's real obvious. Then just follow your arrow. pretty quick here so the structure scan is not picking it up once we get close to our waypoint. And as you say, the, the slower you're going, the clearer that image is. There. <laughs> There's our little gully. Well, Bill, I sure appreciate you taking the time to be down here on the river and walk me through this unit. You've showed me very clearly that this has a lot of features and it's easy to get to. The touch screen is just like a miracle and I'm really going to enjoy walking through customizing my screens and the way you showed me that you can bounce back and forth so quickly from side scan to structure scan to regular sonar is just at the touch of a button. It's pretty amazing. Yep, I think you'll be very pleased with this because you can spend a lot of time on there looking around, going back into history and looking at setting different waypoints and it's a very versatile unit and it's just a, I think a really huge leap in technology out there in, in the fish finding world. Thanks again, Bill. You're I welcome, Dave. I can't wait to give this a try on some real fish. Yep. <laughs>